This is the first video in a series about using Photon Network with Unity. Over the next several videos, I'm going to talk about making a lobby, managing player data on the server, relaying player data to other players, level transitioning techniques, good networking practices, and more. I'm going to start by right away saving the scene with Control S. I'm just going to call it Main. Okay, now we need to make a canvas. So go up top, click Game Object, UI, Canvas. And I want to occupy the camera space, so I'm going to change the render mode from Overlay to Camera. And where it says Render Camera, currently none, I want to select Main Camera and hold it and drag it over. And you'll notice that it shrunk to the size of the camera. Now with canvas selected, right click, create empty, rename this to lobby. You can rename it by pressing F2 while it's selected or while it's selected clicking once and it'll give you the option to rename. We want to stretch out the anchor point so that it takes up the entire screen space. So up here in the top right where it shows like this little target object, click that and left click on the bottom right where it says stretch and then hold alt and click it again to stretch the position as well. I would like to add a background just so we have something to look at. So I'm going to go to create empty. I'm going to rename our new object to background. I'm going to also expand it just like we did before. Left click, alt click, stretch and add component, image, and set the color to whatever you like. Now we need to add a scroll view which will hold the list of rooms that we have. So select lobby again, right click, UI, scroll view. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to room list and I'm going to resize it to take up about the right half of my screen. If you don't have the resize option, click this box with the dots in the corners. So now I'm going to expand the room list and right over here where it says horizontal scroll bar and vertical scroll bar, I'm going to click the little dot to the right and I'm going to set these to none because I do not want to use scroll bars. If you do, you can certainly leave those in there but for this example we're not going to use them. And then I'm going to change the movement type to vertical only so that means unchecking horizontal. Now that I've disabled my scroll bars I can go ahead and delete the objects related to them. So on the left scroll bar horizontal and vertical I'm going to delete. And I selected multiple objects at once by holding control and clicking them. Go ahead and open up viewport, select content, and we're going to add the components vertical layout group and content size fitter. So we're going to set the vertical fit to minimum and under vertical layout group we're going to uncheck both these. If you left your scroll bars you probably want to keep the child alignment at the upper left but since I removed mine, I'm going to use the upper center. I'm also going to rename content to, uh, let's say, room layout group. Now we just need to make something that will go inside this list here. So select canvas again, right click, and create empty. Let's call this room listing go to components, add an image component. This is going to be the background from your room listing button. So you want to resize it to fit inside our room list here. And since I'm going to have these stacking vertically, I want it to be about the full width, but just uh, not as long as the complete height though, because we're going to have multiple of these. So now I need to add a layout element component. This tells the object that it's part of a layout group. 
we need to add a button script so that we can click it later. Right, now with room listing selected, right click, create empty. I'll call it room name text. Set the anchor point to stretch, left click and alt click to set both of those. I'm going to add a text component and this will be where the name of our room will be. Let's set some default text just to see what it looks like. And it's not showing up right now, that's because we have a white font on a white background. So let's go ahead and change that to something a little bit darker. And you can still see it, it's just right up there. But it is a bit tiny, so we want to change the size to about 64. I'm going to go ahead and align it to the middle. And we don't need rich text for this, so I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to zoom back out. And that's all we need for our room listing. So I'm going to click the room listing in the left on the hierarchy. And I'm going to drag it down here to make it a prefab. And I'm going to delete the one in our scene. So go ahead and save your scene. Now we're going to make a button to allow us to create a room instead of just joining one. So select lobby again in the hierarchy on the left. Right click, create empty. We'll call it create room. Add an image component, which would be the background. Add a button component so that we can click it and go ahead and drag it to take up most of the left side but leave a little room on top and with create room selected right click create empty we'll just call it create room text add a text component on the right and stretch the anchors out. Left click, alt click. I'm going to call it make room. And we're going to have to change the color, the size, and the alignment like before. So now we need an input field so that the user can type in what they want to name the room. So select create room. Right click, create empty. We'll call it create room input. And I'm going to resize it to take up the top area here, what we left earlier. I'm going to add an input field. And you'll notice this error. You must have a graphic target in order to use the color transition. So we need to also add an image component and it, this is still set to none on target graphic so select and drag create room input and drag it over to target graphic so you're dragging over the object into target graphic which contains your input field and your image script so now we need a text object to show what the user is typing so with create room input selected right click create empty I'm gonna call it create now actually I'm gonna call it input text I'm gonna add component text don't forget to expand your anchors like before I'm gonna add some default text to see what it looks like I'm going to change the color the size and the alignment So this is what the user will see when they type in stuff. And we need to go back and select create room input. And where it says text component, we need to drag over input text. The input text is the text object that will update as the user types. Now going back to create room input, you'll notice this error. Using rich text with input is unsupported. That's fine. Just go back to input text and uncheck rich text on the text component. Okay, I'm going to save my scene now. I'm going to hit play to test everything out. I'm going to click the input field up top. 
This is a test, seems to be working. The button can be clicked, that's good. Uh, now we just need to make sure that our scroll view is working. So I'm going to drag a room listing into where it says room layout group. And we have one up there, so that's good. I'm gonna make sure room listing is highlighted and I'm gonna hold control and press D to duplicate it a couple times. And it looks like it's uh, staying within the scroll view, which is good. I'm gonna duplicate it a couple more times. Now I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom, seems to be working. Okay, now we can move on to setting up the scripts.